Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather on this day to worship God. We gather on this day of Pentecost to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit as it comes upon those early disciples, as that same Spirit descends upon disciples even in our day and time. In our service today, we will, we will hear words related to the story of that first Pentecost Sunday or that first Pentecost day. We will also gather to hear words that reflect the events of our own day and time as well. As we gather this on this day, our original plan was that we would be live streaming worship today. But due to unforeseen technical issues, we were given an opportunity to continue to do worship in a way that we've done before um, and, and to face the challenges of not being able to connect live stream through our intended plan. So as a result, there are some changes to the order of service. Most notably, we had arranged to have special music to have a soloist sing for us in worship today. But because we are videotaping this at a time other than Sunday morning, we will, uh, we, we will be unable this week to have special music. But we do have special music lined up for each of the Sundays beginning next week in, uh, through the month of June as well. So I encourage you, I invite you to plan to join us during those times, whether it be during a live or a taped opportunity for worship. But do join us as we gather to be God's people from wherever it is we may find ourselves called to be at this time. Next Sunday, you are reminded that we will be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and we will be doing that virtually. So as we did in the month of May, I would ask that you have bread and drink available during this time so that when we, we reach that moment in our service next Sunday, you can participate in the sacrament virtually from your home or from wherever you may be gathered on that day. We are grateful for the continued support that you are providing, your prayers, as well as your monetary support. We ask that you continue to, to provide the monetary support either through mailing in your offering through the U.S. mails or to use the online uh, versions through our website or to, to provide online giving even through texting. You'll note that the information for that is available in our weekly e-newsletter as well. Please remember all those individuals who we have listed in weeks past with regard to prayer concerns and those that we have added to our list. Please uh, especially keep Dorothy Seabrooks and her family in, in your prayers as they worry over her son Eric who has been diagnosed now with COVID-19 and is receiving treatment for that as well. Those are the, the news items of this particular day, of this particular time in the life of our congregation. So let us continue in our worship of God.
join with me in our call to worship. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the mountain and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Our hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sin. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of new creation, we confess that we have failed to trust your bountiful goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you brought forth the earth and its creatures in abundance yet we hoard those resources and refuse to share your gifts. We dishonor your generosity by withholding our charity to those in need. We betray your kindness by dealing harshly with our enemies. We disregard your compassion by severely judging the sins of others. Forgive us. By the power of your spirit, renew our hearts and free us from sin, that we may enjoy the fullness of your blessing upon all creation. Amen. God offers forgiveness of our sin and the grace of repentance. Accept God's grace, repent of your sin, 
be restored to abundant life. For in the name of Jesus the Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us in the language of our hearts, that we may hear your word with understanding and answer your call with confidence. Amen. Our first reading today is from the Gospel of John, a reading from the seventh chapter beginning at the 37th verse. I invite you to listen for the word of the Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And then our second reading today is from the book of Acts. It's the traditional text for this Pentecost Sunday, a reading from the second chapter of that book. I invite you again to listen for the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this, at this sound, the crowd gathered and, be, and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of East, each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The front page of last Sunday's edition of the New York Times read, U.S. deaths near 100,000, an incalculable loss. Rather than spending time discussing or dissecting what we have known and heard for weeks, the article simply listed the names of 1,000 persons compiled from obituaries in local newspapers across the country. You may have heard about this powerful article. You may have seen an image of that front page on social media, or maybe you even have an actual copy of the newspaper. We've known it, it's not a surprise. We've known that it was going to happen. We've watched as the news reported the numbers. Even here in Michigan, now more than 5,000 people have died from this disease. This week, we crossed that 100,000 death line. We're cur we currently, on, at the time of this recording, have reported 103,000 deaths. My grammar lessons taught me that punctuation is very important in our writing. A sentence that ends with a question or exclamation mark sounds very different when spoken from a statement that is punctuated by a dot or period. Of late, you see writers using a dot or a period as a means of making high emphasis. So as you review the article from the Times, you will see at its end the phrase, one dot, hundred dot, thousand dot. It's written that way because it is a staggering number to consider, especially in the terms of the loss of human life. Comparatively speaking, 100,000 deaths from the coronavirus are more than the number of deaths from the 9-11 attacks, the Vietnam War, and Hurricane Katrina combined. Still, as large as that number is, it can remain so impersonal, so disconnected from the thoughts and the ideas that many of us have, until we look much more closely. There were only 1,000 names printed in the Times article, but they, and they represent only 1% 1 of 100,000. Only 1% or an even smaller portion of deaths. Until we read that among those deaths is Larry Rathgeb, age 90, of West Bloomfield. Larry was an engineer behind the first 200 mile per hour stock car. Or we read the name Lanika Barksdale, age 47, of Detroit, who was known to be a ballroom dancing star. 1,000 or 100,000 sounds so distant, but hearing the individual names brings the devastation of this event so much closer to our hearts. We are able then to hear in our own language. On Pentecost Sunday, the church celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit upon those who have gathered in Jerusalem. In Acts, we read that following Jesus' ascension, the disciples returned to the house where they waited. In our current terms, we would talk about it being, they were being socially distanced as Jesus had instructed them. Until, as we read in Acts 2, with a sound like a violent wind and the appearance of divided tongues as of fire, they were anointed with the Holy Spirit. The first gift of the Spirit was the ability to speak in other languages, which astounds not only the disciples who are gathered there, it was an astonishing moment to all those who were gathered in the city that day who happened to be passing by and who heard what was happening. Those who passed by were bewildered, much like the disciples may have been bewildered as well. The crowds were bewildered, Luke writes, because each one could hear them speaking in the native tongue of each. In that moment, the story, the good news of Jesus Christ, 
went from being an impersonal story to a very personal one, as Parthians and Medes, as Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia could hear the good news of Christ. While the central images of Pentecost are described as wind and tongues as of fire descending on the disciples in Jerusalem, they remain too generalized, maybe too mysterious, maybe far more symbolic than practical. But beneath the symbols is the surprising yet important and timeless statement that their message, the words of the disciples, were heard in the languages of all who had gathered in Jerusalem. The names of the thousand may not be familiar to you, but Carol Sue Rubin, age 69 of West Bloomfield, was known for her love of travel, of her love of playing mahjong, and her love of doing crossword puzzles. Along with her, you may have a similar connection, loving travel or puzzles or games. Some who are listed there in the article we can envision in the lives of others who we do know. For instance, Mary and Lucille Kolda, age 92 of Royal Oak, who was remembered for her use of oil and chalk, capturing family portraits. Pentecost is, in previous years and as well for us today, a festive time for the church. It's often referred to as the birthday of the church. And if we had been gathered on this day for in-person worship with one another, you would have likely seen the, the sanctuary dotted with colors of red and orange, the, the colors of this day. You would have been encouraged to come wearing your red. And in some churches, there would have been cake and a party thrown celebrating the birthday of our church. It must have sounded a lot like a party on that first Pentecost because the criticism of those few were that, well, the disciples or whoever it is in that room certainly sound like drunk people. Peter, though responding to those who had scoffed, proclaims that through the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon all flesh, that the young will see visions, the old shall dream dreams. He invites them to hear the good news in their own languages, for the good news that was being proclaimed to them, to all the world, was life, a life that for those who receive the Spirit will never be the same. One of the darkest images seen during this tragic episode are the pictures of death itself. The scenes that are, are portrayed in our news reports of body bags, of temporary morgues where the remains of the dead are being held, remind us of the grief of so many families. The aerial vi videos of mass graves where coffins are being laid side by side as if the victims denied the hand of a loved one as their life came to an end, now hold hands with one another, connected forever in death. We watch these pictures with a cool disconnect until we consider that one of those coffins may hold the remains of John Timothy Barr, age 76 of Rochester Hills, or Myra Helen Robinson, age 57 of Detroit. And we grieve even more deeply when we consider the heartbreaking death of Skylar Herbert, age five, Michigan's youngest COVID-19 victim. This week began with that particular news story, and it now comes to an end and the beginning of this week with a very different and a very difficult news story. The murder of George Floyd, yes, I called it murder, by Minneapolis police officers is deeply disturbing and suggests that we still have a language problem, that we are unable, we are unwilling to hear and to listen to one another. Mr. Floyd's statement, 
I can't breathe, was ignored by police officers who continued to apply pressure to his neck for what has been reported as long as seven to nine minutes. The days that have followed are filled with protests and have escalated to violence by those who proclaim that black lives matter. We need to recapture the language that we have been given by the Spirit. We need another Pentecost, a moment in which we can hear the news of the kingdom of God in our own language. For the language of the kingdom that Jesus proclaimed, the kingdom of God that is announced, that is to dawn, is the language that begins in love and acceptance of unity and of grace. We need to hear Jesus' message in our own language. The future for us is as uncertain as it was for the disciples of that, at that time. Jesus had ascended and was no longer with them in the flesh, yet they waited and they hoped and they trusted. And we've been doing a bit of waiting ourselves and hoping and trusting, especially since mid-March. We've been waiting just for this end of stay-at-home orders, hoping that life will return to some semblance of normal, trusting that ultimately a vaccine will be available to end this pandemic. But there's far more that we need to be aware of, that we are called to be in conversation with our sisters and our brothers of the black community. We need to hear the good news in the language of others like them. The pandemic reveals great disparities within our society, disparities in access to medical care, conditions of employment that force black and Latinos to work even though they were being exposed to the virus. Languages that call for the reopening of businesses that would only favor white and middle class over the welfare of persons of color and the poor. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to gift us with a new language. The argument is made that all lives matter, and while that is so very true, we are reminded most recently with the deaths of Ahmoud Arbery and George Floyd by the accusations that were made this week by a white woman against Christian Cooper, now deemed not credible. They strengthen the need to hear, and hear not only that all lives matter, but that black lives matter especially. These all too recent events, left unaddressed by mainstream society, reveal that we are not listening, we are not hearing one another in our own languages, much less the languages that they may be speaking. And so we will continue to wait, not passively, but actively. We read in Acts that as the disciples waited, they were active in prayer and by inference in their care for one another. Their waiting was rewarded in a very dramatic fashion, with fire and with wind. Our waiting may not end as spectacularly, but the stories of those who have recovered from the virus are for us a spectacular account of grace and medical skill and prayer. The symbols of the first Pentecost, fire and wind, are powerful and possess the potential for creation and for destruction. As we wait in our own time, remembering what was and wait for the birth of what will be, we are called to see visions, to dream dreams. What is it of our old lives that needs to be burned away? What in our old lives, in our new lives, needs to be renewed? The reading of the story of Pentecost is not an impersonal tale. It is a very personal invitation to us, to the church, not the building, but the people. People whose names you know well. To reach out in creative 
and caring ways to our neighbors and to strangers alike. May you hear the call of our Lord in your own language, a language that begins in, with love, a language that ends in love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in our prayers for our community and for our world. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is in Jesus Christ that you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. God, our creator, you made all things in your wisdom and in your love, you save us. We pray for the whole creation, overthrow evil powers, right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice, so that all your children may freely enjoy the earth you have made. Gracious God, you have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ, 
Keep us one in faith and service as we break bread together, as we proclaim the good news to the world, so that all may believe you are love, turn to your ways, and live in the light of your truth. Eternal God, as Jesus Christ came to break down the walls of hostility that divide us, send your peace on earth. Put down greed, pride, and anger that turns nations and races and households against one another. Speed the day when war and hatred will end. Remove hatred and prejudice from us and all people that we may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten, and that all may live together in your peace. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick. Give wisdom and compassion and rest to those who work on the front lines. Stand with those who sorrow. May they come to know, if not in this present moment, at the right time, that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall separate them from your love. Mighty God, whose word we trust, whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth. Even as we pray the prayer, our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Happy Pentecost Day. Happy birthday to us, the church. And although we are not gathered in this place together to celebrate, we are called to be deployed to share the celebration of God's love and grace to us and for the world, wherever we may find ourselves this day. So run out to the front yard and shout to the neighbors, Happy birthday. 
reminding them or maybe telling them in a language that they can understand that this is a day to be joyful. Even in the midst of our grieving, even in the, this moment of difficulty in our nation and around the world, we have much to be grateful for. For God loves us and we are the object of the greatest love ever known. So as we conclude our service on this day, as we do each time we end our service, go from wherever it is you may be, remembering that it is in the goodness of God you were born. It is by the grace of God in Jesus Christ that you have been redeemed. It's by the power of God through the Holy Spirit that you are sustained today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.